Welcome back. So starting out the week, I picked a job that wasn't that exciting. Uh, it's always good to start the week that way. And this was putting these um, hardware bolts and nuts there into the A and B pillars. And if you remember uh, a while ago, we had to put these in because the windows, I didn't, well, we didn't think the windows were going to hold in there after we post cured everything. Uh, but anyway, as you can see, I got them all in there by about lunchtime and they're all, you know, sealed with some RTV uh, silicon as well. So, you know, that'll help, um, or, you know, stop any leaks with the pressurization. So anyway, that's that job out the way. And uh, so next up here, I uh, actually had Devin um, put some Plasti Dip on that little bracket that we created there for the magnetic latch. Um, that one that sort of faces into there. So he did that and he also mounted this um, little 30 amp circuit breaker there that's for the air conditioning yeah, system. Um, we needed one. one for that separate of the VPX. So looking underneath that console there you can see um, there's the circuit breaker there and I've just run the two wires there for the air conditioning that run back and I've just got some connectors on those so you know we can pull this console in and out without having to cut wires. So those ones will connect up one side to the main power coming from the positive of the VPX and the other side going to the air conditioning unit. And uh, meanwhile Jeff is in the process here of uh, getting the final alignment on all of these hangers for the hinges there so we can make some progress towards uh, getting the four plane all completed and closed out. So there you can see he's got a hard point there on the end one because that was slightly different than the other ones. And uh, back on the engine, I've got Devin uh, in the process of removing the redrive here. He's taken uh, most of the bolts off there, I'm getting ready to pull that off and uh, replace those oil rings in it. And also, we weren't able to use those uh, straight fences that were going to double as uh, tie downs because there wasn't enough gap in between the, um, the straight and the actual wing itself. So instead, what we're doing is just creating just a couple of little hooks that's just going to look like that. that are going to protrude down from the wing intersection there. Uh, so Devin's just making some of those out of 4130. And I've been uh, working on a couple little projects that were on my to-do list. This is one of them just putting that back shell uh, casing there on that last connector. The other ones were already uh, had their shells on and some of them, those DTM ones, didn't need it. Uh, but anyway, that was the one I just got, got uh, done on there. So, or it was the other one. And uh, this one also needed one there. You can see it's hanging down. I've just put the little clamp on the wires there and it's... Um, set up now just to put the back shell on so interesting little view this one of the things i didn't tell you was um, i put all those little hard mounts or hard points in the various parts of the wings and fuselage for different camera angles and uh, at the last minute i actually had uh, devon add another one underneath the wing sort of almost from this view here but further back out so um, got some really good spots there. We've got up on top of the wing, we've got b below the wing, we've got right below the engine, which can be faced in any direction. We've got one on the nose there on the left-hand side. Um, and I think there was, uh, there was one on the roof somewhere. Yeah, on the scoop, on the top of the scoop, inlet scoop. So it's going to be cool to see uh, all these different angles that we'll be able to get for uh, different video just so you can see how this thing is in flight. So uh, yeah, it's exciting to get that sort of stuff underway. But yeah, closing out a lot of these little projects right now. So my to-do list is actually getting shorter, and uh, which is exciting. So back in the cabin, I got the power hooked up now to the air conditioning system. And uh, as you can see, there's the display on there, so you can actually turn the fan on. So you can hear it actually running in there. So I only have the, uh, the ducting hooked up to the defrost ones coming out the top of the glare shield right now. But as you can see, there's one of the outlets there. That'll be pumped over or pumping out to uh, one of the vents there on the panel. And then down here on the display there, you can uh, change the different modes. There's, you know, AC and heat modes, and you can change to vent or floor or, or you know, bi-level or defrost. And then, of course, over on the right-hand side, you have your temperature setting there that you can set. 
And I also have that wireless access point hooked up now and plugged into the one of the Ethernet connections in the back is the ECU. So with my little Windows laptop here, just on the Wi-Fi uh, that's now on board, I can access the um, the whole you know engine ECU. And there's the throttle connections can be hooked to the main throttle controls. You can see it there. It's you know Audi aftermarket. You've seen this before. Just moving it there through you know zero through a hundred. And while I do that, if you look on the screen there, you'll see there in the middle, zero, and moving at zero through 100. So that's controlling the ECU now, and I'm look, watching the whole thing on the Wi-Fi, which is pretty neat. So, um, and back in the ECU, the next thing I wanted to do was uh, the, the cooling fan that runs on the radiator. We've actually set that up now uh, so the ECU controls it instead of having a switch for it or anything like that. And I know that's, you know, pretty normal and stuff because that's how all the cars do it but you know I'm actually having to configure this so I've set it up there uh, you know so it'll turn on at a certain temperature of the coolant and and uh, it'll turn off you know when it the coolant gets back down below a certain value after that but you can actually set it to manual here in test mode if you listen you can hear that fan running out the back there And then I can just turn it off again. So that's kind of neat because otherwise you have to, you know, have the engine running for it to test. So it's all fun messing with this sort of stuff. And the redrive is now out and uh, ready to be disassembled. And there you can see I've actually just already pushed out those little dowel pins. Just um, got the clamp in there and a little bolt and just actually put some pressure on there and just pushed them out. So, time to disassemble this thing again. And I know it's not that many times, and I know you guys have seen this before, but i just, you know, walk you through what ended up happening. So, uh, we had received those um, sort of bronze oil embedded um, rings, the ones that basically fit with a very, very tight tolerance around the shaft and around the prop shaft and allow. Um, the governor to send high pressure oil down through the two holes two holes in the prop shaft to uh, the prop in order for it to change the blades from flat pitch to coarse pitch and uh, the other ones that we had were steel and I was worried that they were going to hit and ultimately they were going to you know seize up so decided to switch over to bronze so I got those ones uh, you know a few weeks back um, from Barry and just haven't had a chance to put them in but you know now that sort of going through all these items on the to-do list um, it's time to get this one done so there you can see we've got it apart and uh, there's two of the new rings already put in there and there's the other two ready to go and I actually had to just sort of um, sand them a little bit just on the inside there because they had sort of like a rough textured finish on there and it was kind of jamming up a little bit but I did get that um, all done and sorted out and uh, meanwhile, Jeff's here in the process of aligning all of these hangers there. Just got a little bit of uh, aluminum L angle uh, in order to basically sit them right there and get them all aligned. Because they have two bolts in them right now, and there's a third one that still has to be drilled. And so wants to make sure they're all fully aligned. And uh, yesterday, he also um, bonded this little extra flange in that we needed on the sort of tail edge of the fuselage there for the cowling to mate up to and I guess it was an oversight that we didn't have that. I'm not sure why. Uh, anyway, so there's the redrive now. I've got it back together after a couple of iterations and um, making sure that these oil rings fit correctly. I had to, uh, you know, just take off a little bit on the end of the tabs on them because they were a little bit snug in there and if they're too snug then they kind of um, won't allow the case to go together all the way and uh, after assembling it um, now it's very difficult to uh, rotate the the prop in there which is kind of what we want we want these um, these oil rings to sort of bed in and being that they're um, a bronze they uh, you know they're not going to cause any damage when they bed in so and i actually tested it i just you know just with my mouth actually just blew um, into the oil feed that runs to the prop and had uh, you know good air coming out through the center of the prop shaft but then when I blocked that up there was no other air coming out anywhere so um, 
and th that basically means that it's a, we've got a nice seal there around the um, around the shaft where these new oil rings are in place and before with the old ones because I'd had to clean them back or fare them back a little bit that wasn't the case it was leaking a, uh, a lot and uh, here Devin and Jeff are in the process there of just putting uh, some nut plates there on either side of the this uh, forward part of the intake tray here or actually the rear part because these two bits kind of bolt together and that way you know you can disassemble the engine and not have the intake tray stuck there and uh, here I'm actually just doing the talking uh, I'm actually doing the talking while I'm doing the talking <laughs> so talking up these bolts again and as I said after I talked them up um, I took them to 15 pounds on the main four ones and the shaft was turning um, okay and then when I took them up to 22.9 which is what it needed to be uh, then the shaft wasn't turning but then um, a couple of us got on there Jeff got on it and uh, we were able to actually turn it so uh, that way we know that it's not just seized it's just snug and once you got the prop on there and you know plenty of horsepower it won't take long and we'll be able to bed that that in nicely so that's that job uh, pretty much out of the way now um, so I can put that back on the engine tomorrow and uh, then sometime for the rest of the week there what I have to do is uh, put some more oil back in the engine because I drained it the other day and then uh, more top up the coolant put the fuel back in the tanks or some fuel back in the tanks and finish off a little bit more wiring there in the cabin and we can actually start the engine from in the cabin using you know the overhead switches and everything and running the throttle and such so that's exciting so that'll be coming up and uh, there's the uh, intake scoop there sitting in the tray and we've ordered a couple of linear actuators there one one for this and one for the other vent on the lower cowling so this the one for this one's just going to open that um, up and down there and at the end of the day there today there's a uh, everything all done and ready to go ready to mount back on so some exciting stuff going to be happening this week um, it's really fun now actually closing out all these projects so that's the uh, update for first half of this week and uh, tune in again on saturday and uh, see what uh, we get up to for the second half of the week and thanks again for watching